People ask me all the time about power cables and how can a high-end power cable make any difference, you know, running from the wall to your equipment when your whole house is wired with Romex and, you know, it can't conceivably matter. Um, historically, though, people debated that they made any difference and I think enough people have done comparative listening tests today that people do generally recognize that power cables make a difference. Um, the reasons though are not immediately clear I think to the average person um, but I think it helps if you think of the power cable as an extension of the power transformer. I think very few people would argue that a power transformer or the quality of a power transformer doesn't matter. Essentially the power cord is connected directly to your power uh, transformer in your equipment so it is pretty much part of that circuit. The other thing is the power that comes from your wall could be contaminated with all kinds of RF, EMI, there's all kinds of factors that can negatively affect the sound quality and basically that cable from the wall is an antenna so unless it's very well shielded you could be picking up all sorts of noise so it is a good idea to have that um, and it will definitely help. The other interesting thing about power cable design is that the power that's coming out of your wall is really responsible for the sound that you're getting in that any active device in a piece of electronics, whether it's a transistor or a tube, is basically modulating the power that it gets from the wall and that becomes your audio signal. So the AC power is the energy that powers the music that's coming out of your system. So the power cable is important because it's just another link in that chain and whether it can deliver transients that are necessary or not is going to affect the sound quality. So realistically a good power cable that's been properly designed is going to number one shield you from noise that could be transmitted into your system. Um, secondly it's going to have enough wire gauge such that it's not current limiting and it's allowing enough power to flow into your amplifiers or other equipment. And then the other thing is it also, um, not only does it have to handle low frequencies because the AC signal is 50 or 60 hertz depending on what country you're in. In the US here it's 60 hertz so it's low frequency so you have to handle uh, a low frequency signal as well as transients that could be much higher in frequency. So the design becomes a lot more complicated than simply having a bunch of very heavy gauge conductors to carry low frequencies. So there's quite a bit of different requirements that have to be met in a power cable. And I think listening tests confirm that they definitely make a difference. Um, some are better than others, and it just depends on how intelligently they're designed. The Claris cables have gone through quite a bit of R&D to get them to perform as well as they do. And pretty much, that's, that's the story. The power cable is really part of your system. It's a component. It's not just an accessory.